Okay, so a while ago, whilst I was doing my review on the MTR105, I compared the instrument to the Keysight U1461A here, along with the Gosson Metrop Metrohit coil. At that time, I got asked why I didn't compare it to the Fluke 1587 FC here. And the main reason is that the U1461A alongside the Metrohit coil was my main test setup for carrying out routine and breakdown maintenance on motors and motor control panels. So I compared the MTR105 directly against that setup. Uh, so in this video, I'll go through actually comparing the MTR105 to the 1587 SC, which both meters are at the top end of the respective manufacturer's offerings, really. Okay, so we look at what comes with each of the instrument. Fluke 1587 SC, comes in its hard case here. Um, you get the meter itself, obviously, and you get a pretty good set of leads with it, uh, silicon leads. These test out fine uh, for leakage. You get um, the remote probe that is bespoke to the fitting on the instrument. Um, you don't get this remote probe with the Mega. Uh, you get a set of quad clips, uh, which in comparison to Mega, you, there goes all of it, you get these um, gripper style with this, which don't have the same opening as quad clips there really. Um, quite a bit of difference between them. So for, for getting onto motor terminals, I do find these are much better than the offering from the Mega. Um, and we can show that if we get on here, twill it down for a few seconds. And you can see here, uh, we've got the M12 bolt here, pretty much on its maximum there for the Mega, and you won't get it around the nut at all. Whereas with the Fluke, it easily goes on the bolt, and will also fit onto the nut as well. Um, so, yeah, do prefer those. Uh, into what the Mega has. Uh, Probe-wise, it's the opposite way around. In actual fact, um, with the probes, uh, you get these uh, long-reach probes with the Mega here. You get these kind of standard probes with the Fluke and put these into the terminals. You can see here that it fits okay, makes a reading, but when you get to the smaller terminals, you can't get in there with that, whereas with probe from the Mega, you get in quite easy. Um, you don't get into this smaller 2.5, but the 4 mils there, you get in dead easy with this. Uh, you can, obviously with this probe style, take off the cap, and you've got a standard 4 mil adapter there on the end, and there you can actually, you can, yeah, you can just get in there with that one, that's the wrong way around, isn't it? Uh, yeah, you can just, I can feel it, just making contact there, and you can get in there with those, but obviously for, for my country, for the GS38 protection, you're not really supposed to remove that cap when you're working on live, when you're measuring live voltages. Um, so that's the probes. Uh, the final bit you get with the fluke is you get the temperature standard thermocouple, really. Um, the odd, what you get with the mega in that respect is this T-type uh, probe here. Um, so, yeah, quite a bit better offering than you get with the mega for that aspect, really. Okay, and obviously, case-wise, um, whether you prefer the hard case from the Fluke or the soft case of the mega, obviously with this you've got loads of room to put everything in this case, and indeed, 1587 works with uh, an iPad, and I don't know whether Fluke designed it like this, but yeah, my iPad 4 sits in there, fantastic. And one of my little probes and accessories go in there, meter goes in, uh, and it'll all fit in there all together. Um, whereas when you look at the Mega, um, whilst this is much, much smaller case, if we close him up, you can see the mega, you know, you're what two thirds of the size 
of the case. Uh, so much smaller off him. That kind of gives you problems for getting everything in. Um, I have got an awful lot in here now. Uh, and I've got this lot not in there at the moment, but it does all eventually pack in. Um, but it is a real tight squeeze. I really could do with doing something with this case and enlarging in it. Um, what you get with the Mega that you don't get with the Fluke, uh, that's the lead that I made up. The charger is an optional extra. Um, what you get are these um, Kelvin clips for the four wire measurement function that the Fluke doesn't have. So you get them. And what you do get with this, when he finds it, that's no, over here. You do get with Mega that you don't get with Fluke is. Uh, a hanging strap. Um, this is non-magnetic, it's just a velcro strap to hang around a, a pipe or something like that and then clips into the back of the instrument. Um, these probes, the duplex probes, they're an extra that you can buy. Obviously with the Mega having a guard terminal you get three crocodile clips or grippers, three probes and three leads. Okay, so we'll chuck this out of the way and take a closer look at the instruments. So in terms of connections and instrument, um, all the connections are made at the top here on the MTR105, which does keep leads out of the way when you're testing. However, because of the multifunctionality of this, you quite often find you having to bring the meter around to select where to put the probes, whereas with the fluke, everything is slap bang in front of you and you can swap them over uh, as you sit here and look at the instrument. The only thing that I don't like about the connections on this is that the insulation test is done through this special terminal and the current jack. Um, I've always, always struggled with that. I just can't get that into my head purely and simply because the insulation testing is a voltage function. It just goes against the grain for me to use the current input jack for that test uh, and I'm forever getting that wrong. I'd much rather that the installation test fine have the specialist jack for it but have it use the common terminal instead of the current input jack. So in terms of the actual meter functions, uh, working around there we've got volts, uh, AC, DC and frequency on mega. Same with fluke here, you've got volts, you've got a low pass filter on this which this has kind of built in in operation all the time and then split you have DC volts and millivolts along with the thermocouple uh, measurement on that one as well. The Mega kind of has the same functionality you've got an AC DC mode here um, it does have three phase which this doesn't have and then you have your DC and your AC as well uh, fully auto range and you can't change range on this whereas you can manually drive the range if you need to. This also has a current function, but only 400 milliamp current measurement. The Mega has no current capability whatsoever. In terms of accuracy for voltage and current, this Fluke is a little bit more accurate for both those functions than the Mega actually is. We have a standard resistance range this along with capacitance uh, again you have uh, standard two wire resistance range and you have an LCR meter with that includes the capacitance function when I tested this fluke had better accuracy on the capacitance and standard resistance measurements it also has a much wider range on both those functions than the mega does now in comparison with the MTR105 you get an inductance mode as well as capacitance, it can leave it on auto or you can manually select them. A um, couple of test frequencies, 120 hertz or 1 kilohertz. For the resistance, it doesn't have as good a range as this instrument, but does have a 200 milliamp test function, which you use for testing earth bonding and for measuring windings as well on motors with low resistance values. This is just a standard resistance range on 1587FC 
test current is around about one milliamp so I would always opt for the 200 milliamp it is actually a requirement to UK standards for earth continuity testing uh, as well as the standard resistance the MTR105 has its four wire measurement which this has nothing to compare against so you will get much better measurement of motor windings, transformer windings with the MTR105 than you will with 1587 really. Just to finish off this side of the scale um, oh, it has its temperature function over here which you can plug in the lead I've already shown you and you have motor direction of rotation and nothing on the 1587 to compare with that really. Uh, oh you have the continuity and diode test on this uh, you, you do have continuity on the, this you can turn it on and off and you can set the range for the continuity threshold on this um, you can then turn it on a speaker or turn it off and with this you just have whatever the built-in functionality is of the continuity you don't get the same selection as you do with the MTR105 yeah, so this does have a diode test as well um, and with continuity and resistance you also have a bi-directional test or a unidirectional test um, and the bi-directional the instrument will do one test one way flip the leads and do a second test and then give you the average this just gives you the unidirectional test for the ohms and for continuity uh, and finally on to the insulation resistance ranges um, on the 1587 the voltage selection is through electronic control um, which you can oh, sorry press the right one you 50 hundred 250 500 thousand volts they're all the set ranges you have the 50 volt 250 500 1 kV on the function switch here as an extra you have a variable voltage function which you can set this to anywhere between 10 and a thousand volts so whilst this has the 100 volt function there you obtain the same voltage from the variable function on the mega as well as the test functions here on this you have pi and dar testing and you also have a smoothing function which is the blue button here that I turned on previously the mega has no smoothing function to be honest uh, testing at these kind of levels thousand volts I've never needed uh, an averaging or a smoothing function uh, when I'm testing at 5 kV and 10 kV large stator windings on generators uh, there are times when a smoothing or average function might have been useful but I've never used it on this kind of instrument this also has the standard IR and also DAR uh, and PI as well along with standard timing function in there so both instruments operate the same in that respect um, what you also get with this instrument uh, is a three phase insulation test and also a temperature compensated test so that when you test the winding you can measure the temperature of the winding with the thermocouple and it will do an automatic calculation based on the temperature of the winding and the desired temperature that you want it to adjust the reading to which is usually 40 degrees C for the IAC standard. Now the Fluke does have a temperature compensated facility as well again just for the spot test but to be able to do that you do have to have it connected to the iPad uh, and then the functionality appears whereas with the Mega it's actually built into the instrument. In terms of accuracy on the insulation testing this instrument has a much wider range up to 200 gig ohms 1 kV 100 gig ohms on the 500 volts um, and this 1587 only goes up to 2 gig ohms at 1000 volts it's down to 550 mega ohms at the 500 volt range and continues to go down to below that for the lower voltage ranges so for the kind of testing that I do I don't find that has enough range for PI and DAR functionality you can just about get away with one minute tests on it but when you start to get into polarization index tests the meter usually errors out um, it just doesn't have the range that the MTR105 does really so with regard to data recording as I've said you for the 1587 you need the iPad 
Um, this links wirelessly to the iPad. That's always worked for me, never had any issues with it. You can record polarization uh, index test data with that and any of these function voltage and current and resistance. It will transmit the readings to the iPad. Uh, the unit itself has no internal memory. In contrast, the MTR105 has a USB port at the top here that you plug a USB stick into and all the testing that you do is done to internal memory and then you transfer that internal memory onto the USB stick. Whilst this instrument can record all a polarization index curve, this can't, you just get the one minute, 10 minute values uh, along with the index ratio. And if you want any extra data, you have to record that manually and then uh, enter it manually into a, a computer. Whereas with 5087, that's all done for you electronically. Viewing angle on the instruments is reasonable. I find it slightly better on this instrument, especially with the glare from the stand lamp. I'll just turn him off so that you can see what the backlights are like. Uh, so it kind of shows you. You've just got the one backlight range for 1587 FC there. You've got a multi range here on the MTR105, which is brightness there. But I've said it's brightness with the colour screen. It seriously eats through battery life. And I've got rechargeables in this now. And with the charging unit from Mega, you can plug that straight into the top and you can charge the batteries whilst they're inside the instrument. Let's turn the lights back on. So between the two instruments for polarization index, um, there wasn't an awful lot to pick between them. I'll stick the curve up from the test module. They were both pretty accurate. Uh, this was more accurate with the DAR result than 1587. And for the polarization index, this was a bit better than the MTL105. So 50-50 on that one, really. So you do get a difference with the end result when you're doing polarization index testing. Put a couple of screenshots up of the screens at the end of a test. With the MTL105, you get everything laid before you. You get the 1 and the 10 minute readings along with the pi ratio. With Fluke, it just resolves back to the actual ratio. You don't get the insulation values. There's no way of paging through them. You have to write them down as you're going along if you're not using the meter with an iPad to record the data. The other difference as well is that during the tests, the MTR105 will actually display a time clock as well as the current if you want that. So you can record readings manually as you go along with tests. With the 1587, you don't actually get a time clock with it. So if you haven't got an iPhone or an iPad to record the results, uh, you actually need a separate timer with this to be able to record interim data to get your resistance curve. In terms of overall accuracy, uh, again I'll put a table up that displays uh, the averaging of all the testing that I did. The MTR105 comes out at minus 0.537% and the Fluke is plus 2.376%. So for me, for the kind of work that I do, um, I generally opt for the MTR105. It gives me much better functionality for testing motors and electrical aspects than the 1587 does. So for me, this instrument is aimed perhaps more at a controls technician who wants the voltage and the current capability measurements. This is quite good for measuring transducers for 20 milliamp and it does the job much better than the MTR105 does here. So yeah, controls technician wants that functionality and perhaps a little bit of insulation testing on the side, more as a go-no-go -no -go testing to say that something is safe to energize rather than something like the MTR105 here that is much better for diagnostic testing and long-term trending of data for preventive maintenance on motors, which is the field that I'm in more than a control and instrumentation side really. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful. And I'll see you again in the next video.